Uh, the next thing that we want to talk about, as far as our journey to understand Dalton's atomic theory, is chemical reactions is just a rearrangement of atoms. And this next statement is extremely important. No atoms are created or destroyed. Very, very important. We'll talk about the last sentence here in a little bit even more. But when we talk about a chemical reaction, it's a rearrangement of the atoms. So as an example, just to kind of do something a little different, if I take carbon, one atom of carbon, and I add to it, that's what the plus means, oxygen, O2. And when I say oxygen, O2, we'll talk about this a little bit later. Some gases, we've alluded to this before, some gases always exist bound to, it, to itself. So we talk about O2 gas, like in the hospital. Turn on the O2, you might hear on TV. Well, that's because oxygen doesn't really exist by itself. It exists paired with, it, with another copy of itself to make O2. So when we write the chemical reaction, we have to write it this way because the carbon's not going to be combining just with O, it's going to be combining with a molecule of oxygen, O2. What we're going to get, or I should say one thing that we could get, one reaction, is CO2. Now this is something that I know you've heard of before. It's carbon dioxide. So this is carbon dioxide. And we're going to get into naming these things later. The di means two. So carbon comes from this. The oxide comes from the oxygen. The di means two atoms. So you can kind of, uh, by carbon dioxide, you can put together that it's CO2. If you hear carbon monoxide, mon, mono, mono means one. So carbon monoxide is CO with no two there. One, one to one ratio there. But this is an example of a chemical reaction. So the arrow means this is the direction the reaction goes. This is the product, CO2. Carbon plus oxygen gives CO2. Now notice in this case, the reaction is, is what we call balanced. So I'll write that here. Balance means, uh, we'll talk about uh, this when we study chemical reactions a lot more, but in this case you can see, here I have one atom of carbon. On the right-hand side, I have one atom of carbon. On the left-hand side, I have two atoms of oxygen. On the right-hand side, I have two atoms of oxygen. So if I add up the mass of everything on the left, and I add up the mass of everything on the right, I'm going to get the same number. So everything's balanced. You haven't created or destroyed any atoms. All you've done is rearrange things. Carbon is this chalky substance, you know? It's like a charcoal. Think of charcoal, carbon. Oxygen is this gas that floats around the air that we breathe. Put them together, you get carbon dioxide which is a, something with totally different properties. Certainly doesn't look anything like carbon by itself. That's what we're saying. Everything in nature is a combination of these, of these things in different fixed proportions. CO2 is going to be carbon dioxide. CO is going to be carbon monoxide. Okay? So here we go to the next thing, which is related to this, very closely actually, and that is going to be the following. The next little bullet point in Dalton's atomic theory is what we call the law of conservation of mass. And it's so important, I'm actually going to underline it in red because of all the uh, laws that we're ever going to study, the law of conservation of mass is one of the most important ones. What it says is the total mass remains constant during a chemical reaction, which goes right along back to what we said here. No atoms are created or destroyed. So the total mass in a chemical reaction is a constant. So for instance, let's take our friendly uh, reaction. Carbon plus O2, which is oxygen gas. Uh, yields, is how you really say this, yields, you don't really say equals, so you say it yields CO2, which is carbon dioxide. So we already sort of talked about this before, but if you actually measured the mass of the reactants, when we say reactants, we mean the things that were reacting together, um, the mass before the reaction, 
and you get a number, like 15 grams or something, however much you reacted, and you measure the mass after the reaction, then what you're going to get, and what you're going to find out, is the mass before and the mass after are equal. So you might have five kilograms or five grams of carbon plus oxygen. You might, you might measure that in a lab. And then you have it totally react and produce everything at the end, and then you measure the mass at the end, you're going to find the mass is exactly the same. Because when you think about it, according to Dalton's theory, these atoms, they have mass. And the, the, they're combining, and everything, they're combining, and they're basically forming these new molecules, but the atoms are basically stuck together, so they should have the same mass in the end compared to what you start with. Now, in reality, if you go in the lab and do this, you may not get exactly the same answer because you might not catch all the products. Maybe the reaction didn't proceed all the way to completion. Um, you know, maybe uh, you had some errors in your measurement. But certainly, in theory, if you could measure every single gram of a substance that you started with and every single gram of what you finished with, they will be equal because of the law of conservation of mass. Very, very, very important. When you're doing your chemistry problems, you need to remember that because you're going to be using that fact uh, to solve your problems. It's going to be something that you're going to be assumed to, to totally know uh, off by yourself. Very, very important. Can't stress that enough.